He-Man soars to new heights. Here's a look at the Mattel Master Universe Origins, the Wind Raider. It's time to get back into battle to help He-Man save Eternia from the evil Skeletor with this thrilling Wind Raider assault launcher vehicle that carries He-Man into surprise raids. Wind Raider vehicle includes exciting feature like real rolling wheels, swiveling tail fin and wings that rotate, plus a tow hook with a retractable cable. Vehicle comes also with a flying hover display stand that attaches to the top of Castle Grayskull. Now this review couldn't have been made possible without the generous help of a viewer named The Open Ended. You probably already have seen him a couple of times in premieres and chats. He was very nice enough to actually reach out to me and say, hey, I've found one of the Wind Raiders, would you be interested in it? And having had no luck whatsoever on my end to find these at any local stores, I gracefully accepted his offer to send this my way. So a big thank you to The Open Ended. You really certainly came through. And if you'd like to send some love The Open Ended's way, you can either also check out his YouTube channel and primarily where he does most of his work over on his Instagram account. Again, The Open Ended. I'll provide the links down below in the video description. If you are a big fan of turtles and you love figure photography, you're really going to like his work over on the Instagram account of his, The Open Ended. And again, a big thank you, sir, for sending this my way. Now, of course, to have these displayed, you're probably going to want to have it displayed with figures. So it would make then some sense to bring a couple of figures so you can see some comparisons. Here he is next to He-Man, who He-Man was already piloting inside the Wind Raider at the beginning of this review. Let's just move him over a little bit. Let's also bring in, why not, Man-at-Arms. Bring him in as well. And who else can we bring in? Even though he's technically already here, how is this even possible? We can bring in Prince Adam just because I don't feel like I ever really bring in Prince Adam for these reviews. And here he is, here Wind Raider is next to Tila as well. To kind of give you an idea of how big the vehicle is when you have it scaled with some of the other Master Universe Motu Origins figures. So there's a couple of ways to display the Wind Raider. You can either have it displayed settled on ground like I have it currently right now. And one good thing about the Wind Raider, we pick the vehicle up. If we flip it upside down, they have actually already put wheels, spinning wheels on the bottom of the vehicle. So if you would like to actually just have it rolling on a surface, you can certainly do that as well. Um, the plastic that they've used, it seems like they've used a clear plastic for both the wheels on the back and the larger wheel on the front. But the wheels do, like I said, spin rather easily. If that isn't certainly the way you'd like to display it, I mean, the Wind Raider would be one you'd want to take to the skies, then you can then move your attention over here to come also included with the vehicle. You get yourself a display stand. Two ways of actually displaying it, one of which involves the larger piece right here. Sort of gives you a very similar style of rock face as what we would see with Castle Grayskull. It's funny, actually. I mentioned Castle Grayskull. Stay tuned for that. But it does have a similar color and a similar mold to it. It's all made, of course, of hollow plastic. And then some assembly that was required, I had to put this little computer screen at the front of it, just snapped into place, flipping it upside down so you can see how that slotted in on the bottom of the display stand. And then on the front, you have some continued silver there, a couple of little tanks. I don't know if those are fuel tanks where it stops to refuel. And you may also recognize this little shield crest there. This happens to also be the same one that's on the front trap door, the drawbridge of Castle Grayskull. So that's pretty cool. It has that. Now, of course, the Wind Raider can't just sit inside this open cavity. To come also included is this one right here, this extra little display stand. Now, this display stand plays a, a crucial role for displaying this vehicle elsewhere as well. No, I'm not trying to speak riddles. It does have the continuation of that silver plastic. Again, it's all hollow on the inside and it does have this that moves back and forth on a nice, strong ratcheted joint. All you have to do is take this fit this there's a little little tab right here that slots into the front there's a slot in the back there as well it helps i find to put it in on forward angle and then sort of just snap it into place now it's not locked here it's not permanently here you're not fully married to the idea that it has to stay like this for the rest of time to remove it it's very easy actually just to detach it like that so it doesn't even though there are slots the little tabs here that slot in there it's not permanent it has a nice secure snap, enough to hold the display base upright like this. But again, it's very easy to remove. 
I'll show you how that works in a second, but in the meantime, the Wind Raider does have a hole. I'm sure you probably saw it in between the two cities, the smaller tires and larger tire in the front. This just tabs in like that and snaps into place. And now you've got yourself a better way, I feel, a much better way of displaying the Wind Raider vehicle. Now, because it does have posability, not the vehicle itself, but this section right here, it means you can also angle the vehicle down if you want to have it more on a nose dive, or if you want to have it more soaring up to the clouds, then yes, you can bring it further up as well. And it's nice the way they've done that. Some very minor assembly was required to put the vehicle together. When you get it out of the box, the back fin here actually has to be slotted in place. And all it does is it plugs into the bottom right here and plugs into the top right here, and it leaves enough of a gap that you can actually move this back and forth. Other assembly that was required was, of course, to add the wings. The wings, again, just plug in on either side. And because the way, the way that they're plugged in, it allows you to move those fins, those side wings, back and forth. I love, must I also say, I love the texturing. It kind of looks like a little tiny keyboard. I love the sculpting that they put across the surface of this vehicle. Everywhere there is plastic, which is the majority of the vehicle after all, there is something to be looking at. You can see all the little individual, just sculpted in details. It kind of looks like these little exhaust ports here on the back here. Stickers, if you're curious, didn't have to be applied. I already took it out of the vehicle, out of the box, and the stickers were already in place. That's good because sometimes, I'm not careful, I don't align those properly. Uh, one of the stickers right here, I'm not sure what has happened here, but it seems like it was applied as two pieces as opposed to one solid piece. Flip it around the vehicle on the other side just so you can see. It seems to be the case on both sides. It sort of looks like it sort of looks like a road runner that's just sleeping for a second, doesn't it? Resting its tiny little head. It's had a real tough, tough time. Stickers were already applied onto the back. Stickers were already applied on the back exhaust, the main thrusters of the Wind Raider. And also, in case you're curious, stickers were also applied to the interior control console. Stickers on the side and stickers also in the front. It fits just right, a, a figure. So let's go ahead and take, you know what? We already had He-Man here. We'll put the Wind Raider down for a second. Let's bring He-Man's legs up just, just enough, just about that. You don't really have to have them completely straight. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and take your He-Man figure, or whatever figure you decide you want to display it with, and it just slides inside the cockpit. Now he technically has these little control, kind of little joysticks on either side. Because they don't swing out, they're very difficult to kind of get the hands around. As quickly as you feel like you get one in there, it's then difficult to get the other one in there. And I'm just more inclined, I find personally, consider it lazy more than anything else. I'm just more considered, I think, displaying He-Man just sitting in the, in the cockpit rather than actually holding onto the joysticks. Other functionalities when it comes to the Wind Raider is of course the front grapple claw. And in order to activate this, First of all, this moves back and forth. It doesn't serve much of a purpose right now, but it will serve better purpose to when it comes to winding this up and to fire off this little grapple hook on the front. Not so little, in fact. All you do is press this button right here. It's a little higher. It's quite a bit higher than this one right here, so you know which button to press. Just press that, and it fires off the line. Not too long of a line, mind you. That's as long as it will actually go. Just make sure it doesn't get caught on. There we go. So I'm going to give you an idea of how long that actually will extend out. That's the fullest right there. To wind that back up, you probably already know where this is going to be going. Just take the front nose, the front head piece, I guess the crest piece, and you're just going to wind this. I'm going to move my hand out of the way and do it with this hand so you can probably get a better idea of what I'm doing here. I'm just going to wind it, wind it, wind it. And when it gets to about here, you want to just sort of correct it, course correct it, fit it in there, and then just the excess right here. Again, just turn, turn this just to tighten up things. And it's once again locked back into place. I always like when they incorporate a gimmick or something that's fireable, but it doesn't affect the look or the way that the vehicle is designed. The vehicle still serves as a functional vehicle that He-Man could fly around the Eternian skies. And really, this grapple line only serves as a fun little bonus. Make sure that's snapped in all the way. There we go. If serves as basically just a little fun thing that then the kids can press and fire and launch that out. 
Before I show you how to mount the Wind Raider on top of Castle Grayskull, because that is one of the features it has as well, just for one other size comparison, because there is another vehicle that was released under the Master Universe line, and that is, of course, the Land Shark. There is also the Sky Sled as well, but I think the Land Shark kind of gives you a better idea of how the vehicles are scaled with one another. We'll just turn these sideways. So you can see the difference in size with one another. They're roughly about the same size. If anything, you could award points just a little bit more to the Land Shark because of its snout being just slightly longer than the Wind Raider here. Bringing now in the very large Castle Grayskull, what we'll do is we'll go back to this display base that we looked at before. And remember I showed you that the stone face is very similar actually to Castle Grayskull. But you're not going to mount this. What you're going to do instead is grab the top of this and just detach as this is the part that you're going to want to install to the top of Castle Grayskull. Very carefully, very carefully, I'm going to tilt the castle forward. So you can see right on the top here, when we had looked at Castle Grayskull, if you haven't seen the review of that, feel free to check that out. But right along the top here, one side is, of course, the, the gun, the little gun turret. But the other side is basically just a standing bay where you can either have figures standing, or there was also this larger peg right here. If you take this part of the display stand and line the hole up to the peg, you already know where this is going. And that fits just to the top like this. Snap it onto the hole, and now you've got yourself... A supporting area with a Wind Raider can attach onto. Getting really high up there. So here's the top of the tower, of course, of Castle Grayskull. And then once again, we'll take the Wind Raider, line then the hole up to the peg that's located on the top that we've already attached in place, and snap that into place. And now you've got Castle Grayskull with the Wind Raider attached to the top of it. Now, while you may not be able to see the entirety of Castle Grayskull, you'll have to take my word for it, but you can see how it sort of serves as a docking station, a resting station, where the Wind Raider can sit on top of Castle Grayskull. And then, of course, we can look at the front drawbridge door of Castle Grayskull with, remember, this crest that was on the top of it? Well, so happens to be bringing in the display stand once again that comes included with the Wind Raider. It is, in fact, the very same crest that's featured at the bottom of the display base. Short of this display base not actually being attached to the castle tower itself, it's nice to see that they continued the trend of one detail from the display stand to what we actually got in the door of the castle. Checking off another vehicle I never had as a kid as part of the original Masters of the Universe 80s toy line, but I can at least benefit from now getting as a slightly older kid. <coughs> as part of the new Master Universe Origins line. The Wind Raider vehicle stays pretty faithful, I will say, to the original 80s toy, even though I never had it as a kid. I benefited from having friends that had a lot of the Masters Universe toys. No, that wasn't the reason why I hung out with them. I already liked them as a friend. It was just simply just additional bonus that they happen to have so many Master Universe figures and toys and vehicles that half the time I usually live vicariously through them. And the Wind Raider was certainly one of those vehicles my friend had. Now, this Wind Raider, like I said, stays pretty faithful to the original. This one benefits by also having that docking station display stand that you can display two different ways. Technically, there's three because there's the, we the wheels on the bottom of the vehicle. But who's going to really want to display this thing flat on a shelf? No, you're going to want to put this thing up, up in the sky or the closest thing to that. You can either dock it like you see right here, sort of on a makeshift, almost almost Castle Grayskull type of display stand, or you can remove the silver part of the display stand and actually literally dock it on top of the tower of Castle Grayskull. Spacing permitted, I might even try to do that because the fact that they would even have that as an available option, I mean, I would feel like I would be doing something of a disservice to the Wind Raider by not actually having it docking on top of the tower of Castle Grayskull. I think that looks just so cool. Now, for final looks here on the rotisserie, instead of having He-Man riding, riding the Wind Raider, I instead got Prince Adam. It's a bit strange, though, unfortunately, because you can't really get the figures. At least I've had more difficulty, a more difficult time getting the figures to hold on to those side joysticks. It ends up resulting in me just having them sitting in their cockpit. And that meme of Rambo, you know, when Rambo, the fourth Rambo, where he's shooting machine guns and somebody took out the machine gun. So it looks like he's just sticking up his thumbs. That's kind of like what Prince Adam is doing right now. He's, he's not really actually holding on to something. Instead, it looks like he's shooting invisible machine guns. A big, big thank you again to the Open Ended, who was nice enough to not only pick one of these up to me, but also sh send one my way. If you'd like to check out his material, I can provide his YouTube channel down below. 
in the video description. And more importantly, I can also put his Instagram account. If, again, you guys are big into the Ninja Turtle stuff. Open End covers a whole bunch of Ninja Turtle stuff over on his Instagram account. Again, it's the Open Ended. If you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, making sure, yes, you're keeping your peepers peeled because there may, in fact, be more Masters of the Universe Origins reviews. Who am I kidding? Of course, there's going to be more Master of the Universe Origins reviews lined up and coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.